الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلی وعلى آلہ وصحبہ اجمعین Significance and classification of hadith. We are in chapter number 10 and we are on page 152 of this book. Today we shall talk about Hassan hadith. Last time we spoke about Sahih hadith. Sahih hadith meets five requirements. It passes through five filters. We told you about this. Today we shall talk about Hassan Hadith. So let's repeat what we said earlier. A Sahih Hadith, a sound Hadith is one, one which is solid in chain. The Sanad is Muttasil. Number two, all the narrators of that chain are Adil, honest, Muslim, trustworthy. Number three, all the narrators of that particular chain are Babit, means they have a sound memory or they have recorded in their book perfectly. Number four, the sound hadith, sahih hadith, it has no minute hidden defect, minute hidden defect, and that is called illat. The hadith is not ma'lul or mu'allal. And the last condition is that uh, it does not have shazus. It, you know, the hadith is not shazun, shaz. The hadith is not shaz. What does it mean? The narrators uh, of, of uh, this hadith, they do not contradict in this particular subject with more trustworthy narrators. So when a hadith meets all these five requirements it is called a sahih hadith now the second kind of acceptable hadith is the hasan hadith or good hadith in the science of hadith terminology a hasan hadith is that which has a continuous chain it has been narrated by the righteous narrators and it is free from illah irregularities and defect but it it has also some narrators whose memory is comparatively weak now condition number three is not met here so it meets only the four conditions sahih hadith meets five conditions whereas hasan hadith meets only four conditions and it has some narrators whose memory is not comparatively uh, perfect it is weak in other words the sound hadith fulfills five conditions while the hasan hadith fulfills only four conditions for a sound hadith all the narrators must have a strong memory while for a Hassan hadith, some narrators might have comparatively weaker memory. The Hassan hadith is accepted. The term Hassan what was not used in the beginning. So it was considered to be a weak hadith at that time. Now look at this hadith of Tirmidhi. Lawla an ashukka ala ummati la amartuhum bi siwaki in the kulli salatin had it not been hard for my followers i would have ordered them to clean the teeth for every prayer this hadith has been reported by muhammad bin amr bin al qama died in 145 hijri muhammad bin amr bin al qama 
he has reported it from Abu Salama died in 94 Hijri who has reported it from Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an who died in 57 Hijri this famous companion so and he reported from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in this chain of transmission muhammad bin amr bin alqama is blamed for weak memory the other four conditions are fulfilled by this hadith therefore this hadith is considered as hasan or good it should be noted that with this particular chain of transmission this is a hasan hadith but it has also come in sahih muslim with similar words where the chain is perfect so a a text can be hasan at one place and it could be sahih at another place with a different chain the text is chain the text is same but the chain is different this in this book the chain has a, a narrator with weak memory and uh, in this chain the the narrators are all perfect now there are two other terminologies also you have to know number 1 is sahihul isnad you know the sahih hadith meets five requirements right and you also know hasan meets four requirements but what is the meaning of sahih sahihul isnad the status of hadith with a sound chain is lower than a sahih hadith it means it means the the muhaddis the scholar of hadith is saying the sanad is correct he is only certifying a part of it he is not saying it is sahih he is saying he is saying about only the sanad only about the chain he is not talking about illa he is not talking about the minor hidden defects he is not Uh, talking about shahsus in the hadith he's talking only about this sanad and he's saying okay this is sahih according to sanad it is sahih so similarly a, a a term is used hasanul isnad so hasanal hasanul isnad is lower in degree than a hasan hadith so hasan hadith meets four requirements but the muhaddis is saying presently that i am certifying only that it is hasanul isnad means i am saying that the chain is continuous unbroken it is muttasilu sanad and the narrators are adil but this is hasanul isnad Uh, some of the narrators have weak memory but i'm not saying anything about the the last two conditions of illa and uh, shazus now uh, now at this point we must know what is a weak hadith what is a weak hadith we came to know that uh, sahih hadith meets uh, five requirements and the hasan hadith also is close to sahih but it narrators may have a poor memory now what is a daif hadith daif hadith every hadith that does not possess the four essential conditions of hasan hadith it is called daif or rejected mardud uh, and we shall talk this in the next chapter now uh, the difference between the the hasan hadith and weak hadith the term uh, hasan did not exist in the earlier period the hasan hadith was considered to be a weak one but 
its status was the highest among the weak traditions because it fulfilled all the conditions of good hadith except one the only thing that uh, lacked was someone from its narrators had a weak memory now there are two more terms uh, uh, you have to understand sahi li dhatihi and sahi li ghayrihi sahi li dhatihi and sahi li ghayrihi sahi li dhatihi means sound in its own and sahi li ghayrihi means sound with support you know that the hadith which is sahi on its own merit must fulfill the five conditions and it must be sound in itself now let us learn about hadith which is sound with support with support As, so with sahi li ghayrihi so sahi li ghayrihi is actually a hasan hadith on its own merit but it acquires the status of sahi because the other chains of its transmission are strong so a hadith which has lot of chains chain 1 2 3 4 5 but chain number 1 is hasan it is not sahi but the same text is narrated by four other chains and they are less or more they are sahi so this hadith is promoted as sahi on the support of the other four the number one is supported by the other uh, ahadith which are sahi so this number one is hasan uh, in its own but it is called sahi li ghayrihi The scholars of hadith use the following word for the narrators of the hadith which is hasan on its own so the narrators are called saduq saduqun la ba'sa bihi saduq means he is honest or laysa bihi ba'sun saduq very truthful and saduqun la ba'sa bihi very truthful there is nothing wrong with him and laysa bihi ba's there is no objection against him sound with other support uh, is the hadith which is below the hadith that is sahi on its own merit and above the hadith uh, uh, of hasan so now uh, this is hasan and this is sahi in between we have uh, uh, sahi li ghayri this is hasan and this is sahi in between we have sahi li ghayri it means it means this is not uh, a sahi hadith on its own but but uh, actually it is a hasan hadith hasan uh, but it is promoted and it is close to hasan because it is supported by sahi it is called sahi li ghayri now let's talk about two more terms hasan li zatihi wa hasan li ghayrihi now we have sahi then we have hasan and we have daif and it, in between sahi and hasan we have sahi li ghayri now in between hasan and daif we have we have hasan li ghayri actually hasan li ghayri is a daif hadith but because of the support of hasan it has become a uh, hasan li ghayri so hasan uh, is a perfect hadith and that's why it is called 
hasan li zatihi the hadith which is good hasan in its own merit must fulfill the four conditions necessary to be good on its own the only deficiency is that one of its narrator has comparatively weak memory the hadith which is a, which is hasan li ghayrihi good with support is actually a weak hadith on its own but it acquires the status of hasan li ghayrihi because the other chains of transmission of the hadith are strong so there are conditions for a daif hadith to acquire the status of hasan with other support there should be various chains of transmission of the hadith and its narrator should be stronger than the first chain of transmission and the cause of weakness of hadith should be weakness of memory of the narrator or his ignorance good with other support hasan li ghayrihi is the hadith which is below hasan on its own merit and above the weak hadith so as we said uh, hasan uh, li ghayrihi is between hasan and daif so it is in between now again two more Uh, terms of the signs of hadith sahihul isnad and hasanul isnad so you have learned about sahih hadith that it has to uh, fulfill five conditions now look at the difference between sound hadith and sound only in chain the sound only in chain is sound according to chain and fulfills the first three conditions its chain is uh, uninterrupted the narrators are righteous and have strong memory but silence is adopted about the last two conditions of illa and shazus similarly you have learned about hasan hadith that it must fulfill four conditions sometimes the scholars of hadith use the term uh, hasanul isnad good only in chain instead of hasan so let's try to understand that difference good only in chain hasanul isnad means which is good according to chain of transmission and fulfills the first two conditions its chain is uninterrupted and their narrators are righteous but they do not have a strong memory and silence is adopted about the last two conditions of illa and shazus we are going to talk about two more terms of the signs of hadith mahkam ul hadith and mukhtalif ul hadith mahkam and mukhtalif these are the two terms mahkam is a non conflicting hadith whereas mukhtalif is a conflicting hadith non conflicting mahkam hadith is the acceptable hadith which is not clashing with or contradictory to any other hadith such traditions do not need any adjustment conflicting hadith mukhtaliful hadith is the acceptable hadith which is clashing with or contradictory to other ahadith but its contradiction can be removed by integration and adjustment this is called integration and adjustment these are the two terms also al jam'u wa tadbiq a mukhtalif hadith can be can be accepted 
after the removal uh, uh, of the, the, the defect by integration and adjustment integration and adjustment which is called uh, al jam wa tadbiq for example uh, a hadith can be termed as um, general hadith and the other can be termed as particular for example prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i loved gold i loved gold uh, for uh, ladies ladies have uh, the right to wear ornaments of gold it is halal for them gold is halal for muslim women but when uh, the daughter of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam herself fatima wore uh, he did not like it because now why why she was discouraged to wear it we have to make jam wa tadbiq that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted wanted his own family to be to be very simple and uh, he knew he was told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she is going to depart very soon after the death of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she departed six months after prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when she was only 28 only 28 in the same year 11th hijri fatima died so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted her to be more uh, attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and care less about uh, uh, this dunya and the, 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 the glory of this world. So the, the general hukm is that gold is halal for Muslim women but uh, it is made uh, discouraged for the daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that hadith will be considered as particular, khas that that shall be. So this uh, this is called this is called al jamu wa The the contradiction between two ahadith between the meaning of two ahadith is removed by integration and adjustment now let's talk about uh, a contradiction between the sound traditions so contradiction contradictions in arabic it is called ta'arud ta'arud contradictions between uh, sound traditions sahih ahadith is impossible uh, as has been said before sometimes sometimes apparently apparently there seems to be some contradictions but uh, it can be removed with deliberation the following four things must be considered while removing the contradiction between the tradition so if a ta'arud or a contradiction is found in between Sahih Ahadith that has to be removed uh, with deliberation uh, by four methods. Number one, Al Jamu wa Tadbiq, integration and adjustment. Number two, making one as Nasik and the other one as Mansuk one as abrogative and the other one as abrogated and the third one is rajih uh, and marjuh preferable and non-preferable and the last thing is 
tawakkuf tawakkuf means we stop uh, hesitation now let's talk about uh, uh, integration and adjustment al jam'u wa tadbiq i give you the example of uh, gold for women and uh, 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 how it is made uh, undesirable for the daughter of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the first method to remove the conflict and contradiction ta'arud between the sound ahadith is to integrate and adjust them to integrate and adjust them yani al jama wa tadbiq Uh, one hadith should be considered as unrestricted mutlaq unrestricted mutlaq you know for example uh, uh, the gold is lawful for all muslim women that is mutlaq and the other should be considered as uh, restricted muqayyad muqayyad restricted only Uh, for that particular person for example for example uh, one of the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, sacrificed his animal before the salatul eid so by mistake without knowing so uh, uh, he he was he was pardoned and he was told this is only for you nobody after you shall be allowed to do so and if somebody sacrifices before salatul eid he must sacrifice another animal uh, 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 after salatul eid so Uh, if there is a contradiction if there is a ta'arud uh, with this method of al jam'u wa tadbiq uh, with the method of conflict uh, with integration what we do uh, one hadith shall be considered as aam and the other hadith shall be considered as khas now the second method to consider if there is a contradiction between two ahadees uh, uh, one is considered as annasiq the other is uh, considered as mansuq one is considered as abrogative and the other one as abrogated for example any we told you before uh, it is if it is not possible to integrate and adjust the two sound traditions in any way then it will be seen which of them is abrogative which one is nasikh and which is abrogated al mansuq so it will be learned from history so what was the initial command of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what was his last command so the initial command will be considered as mansuq abrogated and the last command will be considered as abrogative uh, nasik so for example uh, both the abrogative and the abro- uh, abrogated are established by the saying of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at this example of sahih muslim hadith number 2 the 2305 uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said nahaytukum an ziyarati al qubur fazuruha nahaytukum an ziyarati al qubur fazuruha i had prohibited you from visiting the graves but you can visit them now i had prohibited you from visiting the graves earlier but now you can visit them 
So the hadith says that, you know, uh, now you can visit. So the previous uh, hukm or command is abrogated. Now, the second example is, uh, Abdul, it is reported by Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu an, kana akhira, akhira al-amr, kana akhira al Amraini min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tarkul wudu'i ma masatin naru kana akhir al-amraini min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tarkul wudu'i ma masatin naru so the last of the commands of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that you do not need to renew your wudu Abolition after eating something cooked on fire, eating some meat cooked on fire. So it means it initially it was required to make a fresh wudu after after uh, roasting something or making barbecue, uh, you know, after you cook on fire something. But later on, that was abrogated. That was. Uh, made mansuk. So uh, what we said, the the methodology is number one, al jamu wa tadbiq, al jamu wa tadbiq, and the second one is to consider uh, the nasik and mansuk. What was the previous command and what was the the last command of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Now. The third approach is called to make a hadith rajih and the other one as marjuh. To make one hadith as preferable and the other hadith as non-preferable. So if it is not possible to integrate and adjust, in, if you cannot make al jam'u wa tadbiq between two sahih ahadith and there is no strong reason to abrogate any of them now you cannot make a jam'u wa tadbiq and you cannot uh, uh, any abrogate them then we, what we do the strong hadith will be given preference over the comparative, comparatively weaker one this is called to make rajah and marjuh. The, the strong hadith will be given preference over the comparatively weaker one. The hadith which is given preference is called a rajah and the hadith over which preference is given is called marjuh. There are more than 50 reasons for preference. The, the sound hadith, for example, the sound hadith is given preference over Hassan hadith. And Hassan hadith is given preference over a weak hadith. So we already told the Sahih is on the top and then comes the Hassan and then comes the Daif. So Hassan is given preference over Daif and Sahih is given preference over Hassan. Now, the example, there are two traditions about tayammum, ablution with dust. It is said in a weak hadith that you have to strike uh, your hand twice on the ground. And in another hadith, which is sahih, which is sound, it is said that you should strike your hands on the ground only once, only once. So now, there are two ahadiths. Number one is darbatan, darbatan. You, you see, you, you strike on, on the ground or on a wall for making tayammum. So this is uh, one for the face and one for your hand. This is one hadith reported by Imam Bayhaqi and which says tayammamu darbatan." The tayammum consists 
consists of two strokes darbatun lil waj darbatun lil waj so stroke uh, uh, number one bismillah and you make this way and the darbatun lil yadaini ilal mirfaqaini and the second one uh, to to uh, wipe the hand up to the knee and like this that's all this is but this is a weak hadith one of the narrators named Ali bin Zubiyan is weak in its chain therefore this hadith is non-preferable this is a marju hadith whereas we find in Sahih Bukhari Sahih Bukhari uh, a sound hadith a Sahih hadith without any defect and daraba bi yadaihi al arda darbatan wahidatan so now the the sahih and sound way of making ablution is only with one and only single stroke bismillah and then you do this and that's all that's all you know it will take less than five seconds bismillah and if you have extra dust you can blow bismillah and only one stroke bismillah and you know you 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 wipe your face and only the top of your wrist that's that's all not up to the knees not up to the knees only the upper part of this one so this is the hadith of sahih bukhari number 338 so what we said if we find a contradiction between two sahih ahadith at ta'arud then what we do first we make al jam'u wa tadbiq we join them together and we interpolate them but if we fail to do so then what we do we see which one is nasiq and which one is mansuk which one is abrogator and which one is abrogated and if we do not have any sound reason to uh, abrogate a sahih hadith then what we do we make it one as rajih and one as marju one as a, a preferable raja and the other one uh, as marjuh means it is non preferable now the last thing is at-tawaqqaf at if it is not possible after long deliberation to prefer one hadith over the other at uh, is made tawaqqaf is adopted to act upon such traditions until some a form of preference is visible which is very rare if both the traditions are equal in strength and status and it is not possible to prefer one over the other such traditions are called mudtarib uh, a shaky or agitated so you see the scholar of hadith he stops he makes tawaqquf until he finds a solution to it fiqh al hadith fiqh al hadith jurisprudence of hadith what does it mean you know uh, the famous fuqaha of islam yeah, imam abu hanifa Imam Shafi'i, Imam Awza'i, Imam Lais bin Sa'ad, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and so on. They are called the jurists who give their legal opinion on different matters and uh, uh, new issues uh, concern uh, to the Muslim community. 
Now, Imam Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, uh, uh, for example, he is known uh, as a scholar of Hadith, but he is at the same time he is a faqih. He is not only a muhaddis, but he is a faqih. He is not only not only a scholar of hadith but a scholar of jurisprudence that's why it is said the most difficult thing in sahih al-bukhari are the headings that are given by imam bukhari before quoting the ahadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu sallam, he puts his brain in his headings so this is said that fiqh al-Bukhari fi tarajimi the intellect of Imam Bukhari appears in his headings. Jurisprudence of hadith is the science in which juristic theorem are deduced from hadith. Most of the scholars of hadith not only have the firm knowledge of different chains of transmission of hadith, they have first-rate juristic insight as well. The following scholars have a distinguished place among these scholars of hadith. Imam Ibn Shihab Zuhri, the Tabi'i, died in 124 Hijri. We told uh, you earlier about him that he spent 20 years in company of Imam Sa'id bin Musayyib and uh, uh, he started writing the ahadith with the chains. He was from Medina, Imam Ibn Shahab Zuhri. So he is a muhaddith as well as faqih. Number two, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, deceased 241 Hijri, is a faqih as well as a muhaddith. And uh, he is known as a jurist, but he has compiled a book of hadith called Musnad, which has 40,000 traditions. And Imam Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, this is 256 Hijri, he gives the essence of traditions in the headings of chapters and subchapters. Tarajimul Abuwab. Imam Nasa'i, deceased 303 Hijri. He gives the essence of traditions in the headings as well. Imam Shaukani, uh, a scholar uh, to, you know, from Yemen, he was Qadi of um, Yemen, uh, died in 1255 Hijri, about 200 years from now. And uh, his books, especially Nailul Autar and Sailul Jarrar, they are very important uh, in the jurisprudence of Hadith. Let's have the summary of uh, chapter number 10. There are two kinds of Hadith according to acceptability and unacceptability. Acceptability. Acceptable ahadith are called maqbul and the rejected or unacceptable are called weak or mardud or da'if. The sound sahih ahadith and hasan good ahadith are acceptable. The weak, da'if and fabricated maudu ahadith are rejected. A tradition becomes rejected or uh, unacceptable or weak because of three basic reasons. Number one, a tradition becomes rejected, mardud, because of the disruption in the chain of transmission. Number two, a tradition becomes rejected because of defamation of the character of a narrator. 
Number three, a narration became a narration becomes weak or unacceptable because of disagreement with relatively more trustworthy narrators. A tradition is called sound if it fulfills the five conditions. The memory of narrator is weak in hadith Hassan, but the rest of the four conditions are fulfilled. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.